quick. The man's crazy. I can see him through the window. He's got a knife. He chased a woman into a doorway. He's going to stab her. Hurry, eighth and pine on the west side. Hurry, quick. Hello. Hello. Man running amok with a knife at eighth and pine. Attention all cars. Attention all cars. All cars in vicinity of eighth and pine go there at once. Man with knife running amok. All cars in vicinity of eighth and pine go there at once. Where'd you get the pooch? Don't worry about his pedigree, honey. I just picked it up to help you right. All right, let's go. Don't try to see us for a few days, Doc. We'll leave your cup with the old lady. Officer, open the door. Please, officer. I'm sorry, lady, but we don't open until 10 o'clock. But that's half an hour, and I can't wait. I've got to catch a train. That's hard luck, but we can't make no exceptions for nobody. Oh, but you don't understand, officer. I don't want to cash a check. I just want to put some money in to cover one. Yeah? Well, in that case... Oh, maybe... thanks, Jeffrey, so much. She made it. I don't like to see a dame like that get mixed up in a job like this. What are you going, soft on the beans? Now, if you'll just hold Tiny while I make out my deposit slip, I don't know what I'd have done if you hadn't let me in. Now, let's see, do I put down my address, too? Yes, sir. Uh... My maid usually does my banking, and I know absolutely nothing about it. Put them up, everybody. Don't move, we'll give you a trap shut. Now we get going. Feel better with that off your hip. you couldn't park in this red zone. Let me see your driver's license. I'm sorry, lady. You'll have to wait till the officers get here. Well, Jordan, what have you got to say? What were you doing when they pushed in? Well, I was here helping this lady make out her deposit slip and, uh, and holding her dog. What dog? Well, he was here, but he ran away. How come that uh, you were in here so early? Well, I came to deposit some money. This gentleman let me in. Yeah. And he let that mob out. How did they get in here in the first place? Why, I... Well, I guess the door was left unlocked when she came. What's your name? Mrs. Burton. Mrs. Dorothy Burton. How long have you been a depositor here? Well, about a month, I'd say. I see. Do you usually do your banking before banking hours? No, my maid usually does it for me. Well, why didn't she do it today? I let her go because I was expecting to leave town this morning. In fact, I came to deposit the money to cover the check I gave for my ticket. Have you got the ticket? Yes. 
And here's the money I came to deposit. Well, there's your dog anyhow. You better call him. Come here, Tiny. <coughs> Tiny, come here. He, uh, he doesn't seem to mind very well. Nice little dog. Uh, how old is he? Well, I don't know. I haven't had him very long. I just got him from the pound last week. Well, that's funny. Uh, you didn't mention that you got him from the Oakdale pound. No, I didn't. But you did call him Tiny. Yes. You know, the name on the back of this tag is Boots. Well, I don't know what his real name is or where he came from. The friend who gave him to me just said he got him at the pound. What friend? My boyfriend. It doesn't make any difference who. Maybe it does, and maybe it doesn't. Anyway, I'm going to have a little talk with that poundmaster, and you're going down to headquarters and answer an awful lot of questions. Mrs. Burton, I can assure you that if you'll help us in this case and become a state's witness, I'll see that you get every possible consideration. But I've already told you, I don't know anything about it. But I know that you do. And I'm going to keep on asking you these questions until I get the truth out of you if it takes all summer. Now, who were the men you were working with? But I never worked with any men. Who was the man in the car? What car? The getaway car, of course. I don't know. You don't know, eh? Where did you get the dog? It was given to me. I've told you a thousand times it was given to me. Why don't you let me see my lawyer? I demand to see my lawyer. Where did you get the dog? It was given to me. I've told you before it was given to me. held as accomplice of bank robbers. There you have it, another holdup. And all our high-powered district attorney's been able to do is arrest one lone, helpless little girl. She's not so helpless. She's doing all right. How long can he hold her? Indefinitely. Unless she's smart enough to get a lawyer who knows her rights. All Sitton's trying to do is grab himself some cheap publicity. Well, that gang that put him in fatten up on the big stuff. Money rackets. There hasn't been an important conviction since he took office. She's not bad looking, either. She looks kind of familiar to me. Well, maybe she won a beauty contest sometime. Miss American Bank Bandit. She doesn't look the type. Maybe she's not even guilty. Well, why don't you throw the might of your broadcasting company behind her? I'd be more inclined to throw it against Sinton. Yeah, but he's already in. I might be able to stop his re-election this fall. You mean you'd really start a political campaign just to help one little gal? Not to help anyone, necessarily. But to get that chiseler out of office. You know what I think I'll do? I'm going to start a series of broadcasts. Ten or a dozen. I'm going to expose Sith and that entire setup behind him. Okay, Chief, when do we start? Tonight. I'll switch programs and take the 8 o'clock hour myself. You better get the newspaper and see that we get a break. Okay, again, I'm on my way. From the first day Lewis Sinton took office, criminals have been flocking here in droves. We have had four bank robberies within the last two months, and our esteemed district attorney has made just one arrest, a girl whose picture you probably saw in today's paper. They call her the dark-haired bandit to build up the story for publicity purposes. But all they have against her actually that she had a dog she didn't own. I think Mr. Sinton should be our dog catcher instead of our district attorney. I've heard enough of that dribble. You're not going to let him get away with this. I can't stop him from broadcasting. Well, then play it the other way. Offer to cooperate. Ask his advice. Tell the newspapers that we're going to work with him. And if he thinks we're holding the Burton girl without reason, invite him to investigate. That's a good idea. He's through. I'll give him a buzz right now. Hello, get me Kenneth Phillips at the Commodore Broadcasting Company and make it snappy. Hello? 
Who? Oh, just a minute, please. Well, that's getting action quick. Sentin wants to talk to you. Hello, Sentin. This is Phillips. So I am willing and anxious to cooperate in every way. And as for that Burton girl, I'd like to have you talk to her yourself. All right, when can I see her? Any time you say. I'll call you in the morning. Right. Well, that's that. Well, maybe I'm being played for a chump, John, but sit and talk to me like a kid brother. He wants my advice, my help, everything. Mm -hmm. Particularly your support in the coming election. So go easy. Yes. Well, what do you want this time? I've told you everything I know. Why don't you let me go home? I'm afraid you're in for more questioning, Mrs. Burton. There's a gentleman in there who wants to talk to you. Will you follow me, please? Well, what do you want? Ken! Dorothy. Well, I'm glad to see you. Wait a minute, are you the one that wants to ask me some questions? Now, don't worry, I'm not going to put you through any third degree. I came down here to talk to a Mrs. Burton. <laughs> I had no idea it was Dorothy Drew. Oh, I've had an awful time of it, Ken. All I've done is answer questions, one after another. A million times they've asked me. Where did I get the dog? Where are the men that pulled the hold up? Where's the money? Yeah, let me Where... take a good look at you. No wonder your picture looked familiar. Burton. Married? No. I just took that name when I left home. Added the Mrs. for protection. Seems silly now, but I thought I needed a stage name. I even thought I could act. Well, we all used to think so. I remember during my last year in school how good you were in that comedy part. What happened to me here was tragedy. As bad as all that? Well, not all the time, of course. I had one summer in stock in New Jersey, and last season I had a swell spot in a show in New York, but after a couple of weeks it folded. Then it was one agent's office after another, until finally it came to an occasional week in a nightclub. It's the same old story, Ken. Small town girl goes to city, comes the dawn, and all she's got left is her grouch money. Her what? Oh, grouch money. That's what show people call their savings for a really rainy day. To me, it was money to go home on. So you want to go back? Do I want to go back? Listen, Ken, I used to think I hated that place, but now that's all I do want. It was money for my ticket I was putting in the bank when they arrested me. Well, that was tough. And it's only because these people here needed a scapegoat that they picked on me. Well, maybe I can help you. Do you mean that, Ken? Let's see. Sutton, will you release Mrs. Burton in my custody? What? I'll be responsible for her appearance any time you say. Phillips, I think she's a member of that gang. I don't. All right. In any event, she can't leave town. She won't. She'll be at my home with my sister. When can she go? Any time you say. Get her discharge papers, Mac. What do you want to do first? Well, I guess I'd better get my things. You want me to sign a surety for her appearance, I suppose? I'll have the papers and everything ready by the time she gets back. Then I'll meet you here in about an hour. That all right? Sure. I'll do anything you say from now on. Swell, Burton. I can't understand how you failed on the stage. It's because I wasn't acting with Mr. Phillips. I meant every word. Okay, Mrs. Burton. Have it your own way, but I still don't believe you. There you are. Thanks. Don't thank me. Thank Phillips. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Did you? No. Believe it or not, Ma, I finally met a man who had faith in me. He's not the only one. Who else? Me. I always said you had no business running around with a lot of lugs like the mob upstairs. Well, I had to live and they staked me. But you're quitting them now, aren't you? I'll say I am. For keeps. And then I feel better. When I introduced you to Carrie and his friends, I never dreamed they were as bad as they are. There's a police car passing the house, and it's going very slow. Well, I'm sure they didn't follow me here. Maybe they're watching for Carrie and the boys. I don't think they even suspect them. 
By the way, did Carrie leave a package here for me? No, he didn't. I haven't seen them lately, but I understand they're fixing to leave town. Hmm. I think I'd better have a little talk with him. Now, you said you were through with them. Well, I will be. Say, Ma, will you pack some things for me? I'll be away for a few days. Hmm? Cars parked at Smitty's. Okay, as soon as we get to Louis, we'll split the dough three ways. What about Dot's cut? I said we were going to split three ways. Don't worry about the girl. She's liable to be on ice for a long time. Yeah, but I still think she ought to get a cut. How'd you get here? Took a squad car from the DA's to a fake address, then taxis here. Two of them, so I wouldn't be followed. Is everything all right? Yeah, just perfect. So you didn't squeal to get out, did you? Listen, I got out clean and came here for my share, that's all. Where is it? You'll get it, just take your time. I just want to give you a tip. There's a police car outside watching the front. I was right. You did lead him here, didn't you? I didn't mean to, Carrie. Honest, I didn't. Well, we can't take any chances now if they catch us with this money. We're all in for a long vacation. Yeah, she's right. We better blow. I'll stash this. Don't let them cheat you, Dad. You deserve even more than they promised you. Thanks, Wilson. You were always okay, and if you ever need a favor, just ask. Come on, let's go out over the roof and come back for that stuff when we're not so hot. I'll go out the way I came. They got nothing on me. Okay, Dad, I'll get in touch with you in a few days. Anything that doesn't cost me money, dearie. And keep this briefcase. And don't give it to anyone unless they give you the other half of this dollar bill. You understand? Say, that reminds me of a drama I was in. The Erring Bride's Earrings, it was called. And in the second oh, act, sure I was the... wonderful. Now, take good care of it, Ma, because it doesn't belong to me. Oh. I'll do anything you say, dearie. So long, Ma. So long. Sorry to keep you waiting, Ken, but there was something very important I had to attend to. That's all right. Sentence still out, and I haven't signed for you yet. Sit down. Sounds like I was a telegram or a registered letter. <laughs> but seriously, Ken, there's something I want to tell you. About some money that... Uh, don't worry about money, and you don't have to tell me anything. Bygones are bygones. I know, Ken, and that's very nice of you to say that. But still, there's something I must explain. Well, there's plenty of time for that after you get out of here. All I want to hear you say now is that from this moment on, you're going to forget everything you've been through and start all over again. Promise? Promise. And that gives me courage. The courage to tell you what you must know before we go any further. What do you mean? I mean that up to now, I haven't been on the level with you. When I realized what influence you had and that you could get me out of here, I... Well, I played up to you. I even lied to you. Lied right about what? Well, I was mixed up in that bank robbery. You mean? That's what I'm trying to tell you. But I want to square it, and I'm going to do it. Now, wait a minute. You can't square anything like that. Well, here we are, all ready to sign. Well, what's the matter? What's happened? Well, I'm sorry, Sinton, but you've been right all along. Right about what? I just told him something he didn't know. About bygones. Bygones? Yes. Bygones that he promised to forget. But as long as he didn't mean it. Then I'll tell you the truth. I was in on that bank robbery. Well, that's fine. Congratulations, Phillips. Good work. Now let's have the rest of it. 
Who are the men, what are their names, and where's the money? I'm afraid you'll have to find out those details for yourself. I confess to save him the trouble. And may I add my compliments, Mr. Phillips? So, the quicker you realize that this is neither a country club nor a concentration camp, the better. It's up to the women themselves how they're treated. If you behave yourself, we'll meet you more than halfway. But if you want to be tough, we can be tough with you. Now, is that clear? Yes. Yes, what? Yes, ma'am. Tell her the rules and see that she understands them. And she won't have that for an alibi for breaking them. Come on, Burton. I did tell her bygones were bygones. Well, what of it? She's just another crook. Not exactly. Don't forget I've known her ever since she was a little kid. I don't think she ever had a decent chance. Well, she's in the state prison now, so what are you going to do? I'm still going to try to help her, if she'll let me. Everything okay, Burton? Just perfect, thank you. Got a private room with absolutely every convenience. Except, of course, a radio and a writing desk. There's a radio in the big room and a writing desk, too. But you won't be allowed to send letters the first month. Then I'll have plenty of time to think what I have to say before I write. Come on into the big room. It'll do you good to meet some of the others and talk to them a bit. Why should Lewis Sutton take credit for Dot Burton's conviction? Employing his usual bullying tactics, he could never have secured her confession in a thousand years. Yet she responded readily to kindness and reason, and in so doing proved that, despite this one mistake, she nevertheless possesses a basically sound sense of honor and a high sense of duty towards society. Turn that off. Dot Burton confessed of her own accord. Turn that off, I said. Who wants to listen to a mealy mouth? What right you got telling me what to do? This is my night to play the radio, and I'll play what I want. Lucy's right. The girls take turns on the radio, and this is her night. And tomorrow's my night. Then you can hear music that's hot and sweet. Say, I never saw you before. Just who do you think you are? My name's Dot Burton. That mean anything to you? I'll say it does. You're the bandit beauty that Phillips went after. Take a look at her, girls. The outlaw's bride, or why boys rob banks. Maybe she'll give us a lowdown on how to keep out of jail, huh? <laughs> Shut up, Lucy. You know it's against the rules to remind inmates what they're here for. Get back to your places, girls. Oh, oh sure, Miss Jenkins, I'm sorry. I never meant to break no rules. I never do. You know that. All right, Fenton. And don't you start any more brawls, or you'll find yourself in solitary. You've got nerve, Burton, haven't you? So? I like women who ain't all sawdust inside. Thanks. Home was never like this. Oh, most of the girls ain't so bad. I've been here over two years, and I can call just about everybody's number. Who was that little pixie I had the run-in with? Lucy Fenton, president of the Bird Club. Membership limited to stool pigeons only. How about that battle-scarred zombie with her? That's Deaf Annie, a lifer. She's 
got nothing to gain by playing stooge, because she can't hear anything worthwhile anyhow. So why Lucy hooked up with her is anybody's guess. They make a great team, all right. Yeah. Let's ease out of here and go over to my cell. I've got a couple of cigarettes tucked under the mattress. Swell! So outside of working for parole, the other reason for behaving good is to get sent to the farm. That's open in summer for trustees and A conduct girls. Well, parole's too far off for me to think about now. So all I can shoot for is the farm, I guess. Of course, it ain't exactly Central Park. But at least it's away from here and Mrs. Stoner, the head matron. Yeah, she's hard as Flint. We struck sparks the first time we met. How about Jenkins? Tough on the routine. She's okay. Say, if you ever want to get a letter out or get anything sent in from the outside, I've got a friend who's a trustee. Well, I guess that's about enough for tonight's lesson. Yeah, that's enough for tonight. But there'll be tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. Years of them. Hey, Carrie, when are we going to get some action? We're just about out of dough. Yeah, thanks to a little play, man, we're just about out 40 Gs. Maybe it was somebody else. You don't even know if it was her. No, but I'm going to find out mighty soon. What do you mean? I think I'll go up and see her. How? As a visitor. A visitor? <laughs> Quick on the sneak, ain't you? First come, first served. You're gonna get served all right. And I'll cook the dish. You wouldn't put poison in it, would you? Poison? Who told you about that? A little bird. And not a stool pigeon, either. Where's that Myrtle? I'll twist her tongue out. I, I'll... Miss Jenkins! Come here, please. Miss Jenkins, she's taunting me. She called me a poisoner. Trying to hurt me and humiliate me before everybody. Easy now, don't get excited. What's this all about, Burton? Nothing, Miss Jenkins. I just beat her to the ironing board and she got a little nasty. That's a lie. Fenton, you know the rules about that kind of talk. Miss Jenkins, I didn't mean to call her a liar. I only meant I never did what they accused me of. I never poisoned nobody. I was framed. All right, all right. Everybody in this place was framed. Now you leave Burton alone until she finishes and then you can have the board. And you know better than to make cracks like that, too. Well, I didn't do it deliberately. I didn't even know why she was in here. Just a shot in the dark. Well, it hit home, so don't shoot wild again. By the way, Burton, you have permission to receive a visitor tomorrow. A visitor? Well, who's coming to see me? Listen, if it's that Phillips, you tell him to stay away. That dirty double-crosser, I it's wouldn't... It's not e Phillips. Well, who is it? Your sister. My sister? That's what the list says. Well, if it says that, I... What's the matter with you, Burton? Nothing. I just thought that after all that had happened, she wouldn't want to see me. Time heals all wounds, dearie. It'll be nice to see her and know that she's forgiven you anyway. What's the matter, kid? Your sister ain't a vampire, is she? I don't know. I haven't got a sister. Well, now, ain't that something? Time's up, Johnson. Goodbye, Bill. I'll see you next visiting day. All right, Burton. to see me? Just wondering why you're here, that's all. To find out about the briefcase, of course. Sure, I might have guessed that. But you won't find out. Have they got it? They didn't get anything but me. Where is it? So we've got to write our cut, haven't we? You weren't giving me my cut. You were leaving town with that money when I came back. Oh, no. Listen, that you know I... Well, I know you're all a bunch of cheap welchers. You're all set to cut me out, only I beat you to it. 
You're gonna keep it all to yourself, eh? That's right. The whole 40,000. That's what you think. Listen, sister. We'll be waiting. Well, don't hold your breath, because it'll be a long time. And it's ten to one you'll all be in your cells before I get out. Now beat it, before I pull off that trick wig and turn you in. brother? I saw my brother. I saw something else, too. The Burton girl saw her sister, but her sister was a man. A man? He came to find some money. Forty thousand dollars. Only Burton knows where it is. You sure? I'm sure. I read their lips just as I read yours. You going to tell the matron? Nothing I could tell anyone has helped me. Then it's a secret? Your secret. Maybe it'll help you. I'll say it will. Did she tell the man where it was? No. Then I can tell Mrs. Dora whenever it'll do the most good. So that's who my sister was. Carrie Wells, the guy who was glad to see me take the rap so he could get my share of the money. Was it a lot? Yeah. But it's where it won't do anybody any good now. I'm sorry. So am I. No, I don't mean only about that. I was hoping your visitor might have been someone sent by Kenneth Phillips. Phillips? Say, I hate him worse than I do Carrie. Maybe so. But he can help you. He already helped me once, to get in here. Yeah, but you don't know how he feels about that now. You haven't even read his letters. I got a hunch he's sorry. Well, it's too late for that now. I don't think so. He's a big shot. He's got a drag. If he wanted, he could help you even in here. See, I never thought of that. Well, then think about it now. Write him, see him, find out what's on his mind. Say, <laughs> I'd play ball with anybody but Hitler to get out of this hole. Why the big smile? Good news? You said it, John. Dot Burton wants to see me. Well, I thought you sent back all your letters. She did. She must have had a change of heart. Now you just can't wait to see her and give her your love and regrets. More than that, John, I want to give her a little hope. A hope that I can get her the chance she wanted before. The chance to go straight. Because now you're paying your debt to society, you, you've earned the right to a new life. Yes, I know that, Ken. And I've learned my lesson at last. So if we can just let bygones be bygones, like we talked about before, well... Oh, that's swell, Dot. Well, I'm going to tell you something else. Oh, no more advice, please. I'm afraid I couldn't stand it. Oh, very well, then. I'll give my advice to someone that'll appreciate it. I'm going to ask the board to consider your parole. Oh, Ken, that's wonderful. I never dreamed that you'd ever have faith enough in me again to do anything like that. Oh, but I have, Dot. All the faith in the world. 
That's big and fine and generous of you. And I love you for it, Ken. So you kissed and made up, huh? Well, when I told him I loved him, he beamed like a Brooklyn school kid with a ticket to the World Series. Sure. Men are all the same. They believe what they want to believe. So then he said he'd check with the district attorney and have a talk with Mrs. Stoner here. He was almost sure the board would parole me at their next meeting. Well, you're practically out. With Phillips going to bat for you, how can you miss? Mert, I feel kind of cheap promoting Ken like this. You know, he always liked me when I was a kid. Now, listen, hon. You're not going to weaken. Not exactly, but I'm beginning to see his angle. Just like he said, I made a mistake and I've got to pay for it. Well, if you feel that way about it, you love the guy. But don't let love make you forget the 40 G's. Don't breathe a word about that money again. If anyone here even suspects, I'll really be cooked. Scram, you stool pigeon. I have news. The friend's coming up for parole. What friend? Dot Burton. Which? She'll be up next month. Phillips is helping her. Phillips? She saw him today. Then I'll see the matron. And tell her? All about the money. That will help me with the matron and Fix Burton so she'll never get out, understand? Not so fast. Fix Burton so she'll never get out, never. Never get out? That's what I said. She won't get a chance to spend that money. When will you tell? No? Yeah. No, I'll wait. I'll wait till the day of the meeting. I'll let Burton build her hope sky high. Then watch him tumble. Won't be long now, Burton. I hope you make it. Thanks, Miss Jenkins. I hope so, too. Excuse me, Mrs. Stoner, but, um... Uh... Could I speak to you a minute, please? I'm busy now, Fenton. I have a parole board meeting at 10. Yes, I know. That's what I wanted to talk about. Well, you're not eligible for that for several months yet. No, ma'am. But Dot Burton is today. What have you to do with that? Well, um, nothing directly. But, uh, you know, I'm always anxious to help whenever I can. Even if the girls do think I tell them I shouldn't. I know you understand that I'm only doing it for, uh, the general good. Oh, come to the point. If you've anything worthwhile to tell me, you know I never forget. It's about the money that was stolen from the bank that Dot Burton's mob stuck up. What about? Well, the bank wants it back, don't they? They'll pay a reward, won't they? Certainly, so what? Mrs. Stoner, if you approve Dot Burton's parole and she gets out, you'll be freeing the only person in the world who knows where that money is hidden. How do you know? One of the gang came to see her dressed as a woman. She wouldn't even tell him where it was. I can't quite believe that. Oh, but ma'am, it's true. I know it. Well, there's a way to find out. And if it is... Uh, see what it is. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Phillips is here, ma'am. Oh, tell him I'll meet him in the boardroom in just a minute. But he said he wanted to see you before the meeting. Maybe it would be as well to see him first. Uh, show him in, Mary. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Phillips, please. Good morning, Mrs. Stoner. I just thought I'd check with you before the proceedings start. I have Mr. Simpson's letter here approving the application for parole, and I thought you might submit it with your own letter. Well, that would be the procedure if I were going to approve. If you were going to approve, but you agreed. That was before I learned certain new facts concerning the case, Mr. Phillips. 
You mean about Miss Burton? I do. Well, I don't know what you could have learned. That was the first criminal act she ever committed. Now she served more than enough time to be eligible. Well, there's still the question of the stolen money. Uh, she didn't take that. She never left the bank until she was arrested. Just the same. I have reasons to believe that she, and she alone, knows where it is. That's absurd. If she knew where the money was, she'd have told the authorities long ago to help her own case. Ah, uh, not necessarily. What are a few months in jail compared to all that money? Uh, I still don't think she knows. Well, there's one very simple way to find out. Just make her a proposition. What kind of a proposition? If she'll tell us where the money is, we'll approve her parole. I wouldn't do a thing like that for a million dollars. Either she's entitled to an unconditional parole or she isn't. Just the same, I intend to find out where that money is. So I shall not approve her application at the present time. Well, that's not fair. That's my decision. May I see Miss Burton? No. Very well, then I'll see the district attorney. I'll see the governor. You may see anyone you want, Mr. Phillips, except Burton. You did just right, Mrs. Mm. Stoner. Yes, I'm sure I did, Fenton. Anything else you want of me? No, you may go. Oh, uh, you may tell Miss Jenkins that Burton is not to appear before the board today. Yes, ma'am. I will. Oh, Miss Jenkins, tell Burton to wait. Miss Jenkins, Mrs. Stoner said for you to tell Burton that she's not to appear before the parole board today. Well, it seems to me like you've told her yourself. But why? Has the meeting been postponed? No. They just scratched your name off the list. I can't understand that. Mr. Phillips said that... Mr. Phillips said plenty. Oh, but I'm not supposed to tell what I heard. I'll find out what happened, dearie. Probably just some red tape that's got tangled. What did happen, Fenton? I can see you're just itching to gossip. Well, to tell the truth, if that's possible... Oh, but I am telling the truth. Mr. Phillips told Mrs. Stoner that you know where the money that was stolen from the bank is hidden. Ken Phillips said that? Yeah. And he also said that before he'd approve your parole, you'd have to tell him where it is. So that's his game. All he wanted was the money. Wait a minute. If Phillips wanted to make such a deal, why didn't they send for Burton? Because Mrs. Stoner wouldn't go for it. She said parole shouldn't be bought or sold. And that either Burton deserved one unconditionally or not at all. That doesn't sound like Stoner. And she also said that she didn't think Burton knew where the money was hidden anyhow, or she'd have offered to make a deal long ago herself. Why didn't Mrs. Stoner call me in to face that heel? No, because when Mrs. Stoner refused, Mr. Phillips didn't want you to know that he suspected you. Maybe he'll have you followed, if you ever do get out. That's the dirtiest trick I ever heard of. Play down, kid. You don't want everybody to hear this. No. And don't tell anyone I told you either. I'll get him wrong. You'll always be in wrong with me. And I know the kick you get out of telling me this. Come on, Dot. Let's talk this over quietly. Something smells pretty sour about the whole setup to me. Whatever happened, I've got a hunch that Fenton Dame was at the bottom of it. Well, I don't trust her either, but one thing makes me believe her this time. Ken Phillips said I had to pay for everything I did, and if he thought I knew where the money was, he'd want it paid back. But how did he know? You told me. Oh, well, I never told a soul, but... Well, you talked about it in the visiting room, too, didn't you? Oh, but we were whispering. Just the same, I'm giving ten to one, that's how it got out. That's it. I told Carrie and he told Ken. Is this Carrie screwy enough to pass up 40 G's just to get even with you? No, of course he wouldn't. Well, that's out. But I'd pass up a mint to get square with Mr. Phillips. Tough to do, I'd say, you being in here. Maybe. But if I could play them one against the other, I saw Mrs. Stoner Burton, and the only thing I could learn was that she shelved your application. Well, I think I know why she did it, Miss Jenkins. Maybe she's right. That's the way to take it, dearie. It'll all work out for the best later, I'm sure. Miss Jenkins, will you tell Mrs. Stoner to get Mr. Phillips here? I'll tell him where the money is, if they approve my parole. Oh, so it's money you would give them. Well, if that's the way it is, I'll tell her. But it's no way for anyone to get a parole. Have you gone crazy? Not me. 
I'm going to outsmart him. That is, if you can do what you said you could. What's that? Get a letter out? That's easy. That settles it, then. When Ken Phillips gets that money, he'll think he was bombed by a flying fortress. All I want you to do is to see that he gets what he deserves for double-crossing me. D.B. Can you tie that? Ma must have had the dough all the time. You ought to shake it down for it right now. No, we ain't gonna do that. We're gonna do it just like Dad said. But why didn't she tell me where it was when I saw her? Maybe she was figuring on buying out with it. Sure, then a strict reform across it. We'll take care of Mr. Phillips. Burton! I told you it meant knowing about the stolen money, Miss Burton. Is that right? Yes, I know where it is. Where is it? Wait a minute. We got something to settle first. Remember, I've been fooled before. But that's all been explained. I'm talking about the clever little deal you've made. Oh, but I never I had... Don't a... bother to alibi. I know all about it. You know all about it. Who told you? If it was Lucy, I'll... Even if it was Lucy, I wouldn't snitch on her. But that's all past history now. How about my application? Have you approved it? The district attorney, Mr. Phillips, and my letters are in here. But you can hardly expect me to submit them yet. Is your letter in there? Yes, but I must admit I hated to write it under these circumstances. I'll bet you did. All I can say is that you'd have had the money a long time ago without writing anything. You'd had half as much faith in me as you said you did. Well, that's pretty hard to believe in view of what you're doing now. I'm buying my freedom, that's all. I got that money as soon as I got out of jail, and I told you in sentence office I had something to give you. But you couldn't wait. You were in such a hurry to turn me in. Yes, I think I do remember you saying something of the sort. Mrs. Stoner, you've got to promise me one more thing. I haven't got to promise you anything. Oh, but this is for your benefit. I don't want anybody chiseling in on the credit that belongs to you. So I want Mr. Phillips to go for the money alone and bring you the reward. Well, Burton, that's very considerate of you, I'm sure. What do you say? All right with me. But you must promise to go by yourself. Here's the name and address of the person who has the money. And here's part of a dollar bill. You'll need it to prove that I sent you. Okay. It'll have to wait until after my broadcast tonight, though. Oh, that's all right. You can phone me in the morning that you have it, and then I'll mail this. Yes, and be sure and phone as soon as you can. Naturally, I'll be anxious to know how you came out. Right. Goodbye, Mrs. Stoner. Goodbye. Anything else, Mrs. Stoner? Uh, no. That's... Except that... Well, I appreciate it the way you handled everything. Thank you. I thought I did a pretty good job myself. This way, I may still get my cut and get out of here, too. Not to mention getting square with your friend Phillips. Yeah, I can imagine that. If I know Wilson, he'll crash in on him like an army tank. Well, you played it smart all the way around. If Stoner's on the left. Of course she is. She thinks I'm her fairy godmother now. Look out, she's coming now. Good evening, Burton. I just stopped by to uh, thank you again. And to ask you if you remember just how much reward was offered. Oh, about $5,000, I believe. My, that's more than I expected. And to think that I almost let Mr. Phillips talk me out of making the deal. He tried to talk you out of it. But I thought it was his idea in the first place. The idea was solely mine. That's why I'm entitled to the reward, as you said. But wasn't he the one who told you I knew where the money was? He told me nothing of the sort. I found that out myself. How? That we'll not discuss. But I'm quite certain that he's not entitled to the reward in any way. I'm not worrying about the reward. I'm worrying how I've been tricked. What do you mean, I never tricked you? Well, whoever did it all adds up to the same. I made a terrible mistake. 
foul. But Ken, he's innocent. He didn't cross me. And now he's walking into a trap. I don't understand. You don't have to. Only phone Ken not to go for that money. He's in danger. Of what? Why have you imagined all these things all of a sudden? I'm not imagining it. It's true. How do I know that this isn't just some scheme to keep us from getting the money at all? Mrs. Stoner, you've got to believe me. I don't. At least you've got to phone. I shall do nothing of the sort. Well, I guess I'm sunk, that's all. Where are you going, Snoop? None of your business. Won't you come in and visit me for a while? No. You mean yes. Oh, whoa. Oh. You are nuts to do this. It's the only thing I can do. There's no other way. But you've ruined everything. You'll never get parole now. I'll never want a parole if anything happens to Ken. like Dot's just giving us another runaround. Dot don't give anybody a runaround. said, if that matched your half, you'd have a package for me. Wait a minute. I'll see if it matches. like a sister act. How is she getting along? Fine, thanks. And she'll feel even better when I tell her I have this. And you ain't gonna tell her anything, brother.
shoulder. Come on, take mine. Bone headquarters and tell them car 23 has been stolen. Get it. Operator, give me police headquarters. <laughs> Central on the next turn. Best bet is to hit by the waterfront. Since we get on Bayshore Drive, we'll hit a straightaway. Squad cars are hopped up plenty. But light traffic on the coast road, we're a cinch to lose them. Hello, Harbor Station. The gang is called Car 23 or on Central, headed for Bayshore. If you work fast, you can block them at the intersection. That's all. will run you down if it takes a million dollars. Think you're worth that much? I'm not. Getting you is. Because you're a killer. You shot him and Wilson, too. What are you doing? I'm spraying my hands so I can handle the rod. OK, but don't try to free yourself with all that jack on you. Or maybe I could plug one of their tires. Don't try it. Wreck the car and the girls in there. We're blocked. Look, there goes one of them. this song, so nothing with me can be wrong. I breakfast, lunch, and dine each day on nutty bread, so I'm okay. Open. Very good. Yeah, we were listening. It sounded like you had your heart in it. Tired? Tired of lying in bed, but not tired of rehearsing. That is, if you think I really have a chance for a job. Oh, you have more than a chance. You have a sponsor. Oh, but Ken, that's not possible. Well, nobody's even heard me. Oh, I have. And I've assured the parole board that you have a job the moment they approve your application. Oh, Ken, that's swell. Where is the job? Well, my studio. What do you think? Well, will I be on as a regular commercial announcer? Well, you're going to be with me regularly anyway. And I hope one of the announcements won't be commercial at all, but more in the nature of a society item. Such as? Well, you'll have to write that yourself, but it must begin with yes. <laughs> 